My name is Darren Doherty. I'm from Bendigo in central Victoria, about a, two hours north of Melbourne. I grew up on a farm, old family farm there. Um, my father was killed in Vietnam when I was very young, um, three months old, and so uh, my maternal grandfather effectively became my father on the farm. And uh, he endeavoured to teach me a lot of things about rural living and uh, farming and whatnot. So. Um, and I work now, I've worked for 22 years now as a um, regenerative agricultural consultant. So I design people's farms. Uh, I work a lot with startups, both with people who are um, existing producers who want to reboot their landscape and reboot their, their farm enterprise. Um, but I also work with people who are, you might call tree, as we call them in Australia, tree changers, people who are or homesteaders as they're often called, people who had an agrarian inkling for a long time and now have the means to enact that. So we help them set up and, and go with it. Yeah. Um, across Australia, there's a, there is a growing interest in people uh, practicing or uh, regenerative agriculture. Um, that also stems from a consumer need and, and the consumers, you know, a lot of, we do farmers markets uh, in a lot in Australia and of course that consumer to producer interface creates a conversation which, um, which then, ex, you know, starts off with um, civil, uh, well, I wouldn't say civility, but starts off with sort of the small talk about the product, but then it starts to get deeper. Oh, so what, do you, what soil treatments are you using? Are you spraying? Are you doing this? You know, what are you doing? How are you getting your animals processed? Uh, are you using nitro? You know, the whole, the whole um, food discussion starts rolling on, and of course, then uh, the production questions start being asked. And and you know, as we say, agriculture or producers of agricultural products are in the business of supplying. Um, food, fibre and now energy crops to a consumer and consumer demand. And so, you know, if the consumer demands that there's a change in their production system, well, then they will change and they do. And that's, that's what we're really see, seeing, you know, that coalescence between the consumer and the producer is, is really what's driving a lot of this. Um, yeah, it's not just this sort of that we've got um, a growing demand for certified organic out there. It's, it's not just people who are certified, there's a lot of other people who are doing it without certification on a localised level. It's really important that consumers start to take a really big interest in, in what they're eating. I think that that, I mean, as, as I mentioned before, that's, that, that is what my wife and our family and um, we talk about all of the time and we focus a lot of our own filmmaking efforts on that, um, both in short and longer form, um, because the consumer is king. Uh, they will make the changes in agriculture because they drive demand. And, but it's great that, that now we've got this sort of local, localised uh, marketing systems going on, um, not as great as we'd like, but that, those, that the conversations which drive that connection and drive that change are really starting to emerge. And it even gets better when those consumers actually go out to these properties and start to not just have a, the market as the interface, but actually start to have the production system as being part of their interface. And they're really starting to associate. And people are smart. You know, they can join the dots. They can see if things are not necessarily working right. And hopefully the producer is happy to have that sort of conversation because one of the things that uh, agriculture is, is a tough game. Um, you know, you've, you've, got to have, you've got to have some means in a very tough environment to be able to, to fix up the degenerative um, land management practices that we've had for centuries in many places. And, you know, so it takes a lot of effort and there's no humans out in agricultural landscapes anymore. I mean, we've had, you know, as an old friend of mine said, the purpose of the city is to keep people out of the country and it's been really effective at that. Where you've got a big brain drain, you've got a big, you've got a big human resource drain and so you've got a lot of increasingly older people managing these increasingly fragile landscapes and that's that takes some resources to fix and so we're pretty encouraged by, by that reconnection. We 
first saw the, the emergence of the um, Savory Institute through the internet. Um, look, they, they've, they, they started up in the era of the internet and internet communications and being someone who's been the, using the internet since 1993, um, I'm a pretty keen user of it. And so, and, and this is my industry. I mean, you know, you should know most of the people. And if, I was talking to some guys in the last couple of days and there was a lot of new names that I hadn't been aware of. And I think that's really good um, that we're actually getting an expansion of the population. It's not just the same old choir as it has been for a long time. We're really starting to get an emergence of other entrepreneurs and players who are joining in this space and doing amazing things. And, and I think that the Savory Institute will will in, hopefully um, influence them with their unique insights, um, particularly around managing holistically. Um, consumers can get involved in a whole range of different ways. I mean, starting with the way they spend their dollars and the conscious decisions about what they put in their mouth um, and, and the air that they breathe. And even down to, like we say, I mean, if, you, if we're really serious about this, what we do with our shit, you know? Because at the moment, you know, you, you, might, be, you might be a complete locavore and you do all of this wondrous th thing, but then you st we still don't have a closed mineral cycle. That, that is a real weak link in, the, in this um, reconfiguration or the current reconfiguring, if you like, of the urban to rural connection. What we actually need to do is have that manure, which is minerals ultimately that have been extracted off a farm, actually go back to those farms. And so we need what we call entrepreneurial um, nutrient cycling engines to really drive that. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to see people come up with some solutions there. I mean, I have my ideas on how it might happen. So that's another, that's another conversation around it. But by and large, what we're, you know, just to start off, we don't get right into the nitty gritty from the, from the go. Um, we like to just focus on people deciding, well, just thinking, what am I putting in my mouth today? And let's trace that back. You know, if I knew, if I knew that this did what it, what it does in its production system, it's probably unlikely that I'd actually eat this food or eat this product, I'll call it, because a lot of it's not food. Um, and you know, if, pe if people sat down and they, and they developed their own context, a holistic context, and they said, you know, we don't want to see the earth polluted, we don't want to see this and that, and then they go on and decide how they're going to eat, well, then they're going to eat very, very differently because they'd be, they'd be appalled at what goes on. And, of course, with that comes a form of, of uh, passive boycott, that starts to direct uh, funds in a different way and, um, and so on it goes. Health, health is something that uh, a lot of people who are in, interested in holistic management are very concerned with. I mean, you're no use to anybody unless you're healthy. And, uh, you know, and, it's, and it's sort of a lack of holism if all you want to do is produce good food, but then not eat good food. And some people do that, and I find that difficult to, to reconcile. But it is, it's, it's generally the case that a lot of people who are interested in holistic management are also very interested in food. And having a convivial and wholesome um, eating environment, family environment, all of those things are things that are very important to them. And that, just happens to be one of the reasons why our family are, uh, are involved in the holistic management movement. So yeah, holistic management is, uh, is interesting in that most people connotate it with, uh, with rural management, with livestock and all of that. And I think that's largely the narrative that's being built by Savory Institute, um, by Holistic Management International, a lot of other people who happen to practice it by default. Um, now that's not their fault. Um, because that's the space that's actually really important. We need to regenerate our grasslands and get our, you know, our world going again. Um, but you know, for me, when I think of holistic management, I actually come back to the frameworks for holistic management, which is really, and that's what really attracted me. It wasn't all of the, because I was already doing all of the tools, if you like, it was the thinking. And that, those testing decisions and that development of the holistic context and all of those things, started to create a, a, a somewhat of an orderliness in what is otherwise my own mind's chaos 
And I find that really important, and I and I really um, I really enjoy having that conversation with my thoroughly urban and dedicated urban friends to say, you know, how about thinking about the way you make decisions in a different way, because it really doesn't matter whether you're an urban person or a rural person. The way we make decisions often is appalling, and uh, and this is a this is the best framework I've come across that is truly holistic and addresses. Um, not only the social needs of people, but also the ecological needs of our planet and, uh, and our financial needs that we all have and the way that we integrate our different forms of capital. Yeah, so I, I find it quite profound.